Hey guys, welcome to That Pedal Show. Hello. Dan here. Mick here. This is a strange one. We seem to have odd guitars. <laughs> I know. I wanted to spend just a little bit of time talking about how to amplify and use pedals with acoustic guitars. Um, the reason I wanted to go through this is because it's something that I've been struggling with for a very long time. Hmm. I, uh, in my band and actually in a duo, I play acoustic. Um, in Ten Spirits, I'll have an acoustic mounted on a stand, so I'll play you're rocking out, and then I've got to go to the acoustic. You've got one of those stands. I've got one of those stands. <laughs> I invented those stands, baby. <laughs> I, you and Kirk Hammett. I mean, yeah. Well, it's funny. I've been so back in the '90s, and I was playing with this girl called Max Sharam in Australia. Girl singer. Girl singer, but she was awesome. She, when I was doing a solo, she'd take her microphone, run up, and stick it in front of my amplifier. Oh, okay. She was awesome. And uh, sure, she was a girl. Yeah, she was a girl, very girly. Uh, um, she was amazing, actually, because she was quite a quite a uh, well-known artist in Australia at the time. Yeah, um, we had a top ten album and all that stuff. And there's yeah. TV, old TV footage of Dan with hair. <laughs> Check that out. <laughs> so, but one of the things I would do because um, there was a lot of acoustic uh, guitar in her material, and so I had to have an acoustic on a stand to go back and forth between the two. Mm. And I've loved doing that ever since. It's such a Acoustic guitar in is in rock bands is so great, you know. So, you know, I've done that for a long time, and I've always struggled, mm. especially in loud environments. Well, even before you get anywhere near effects, there are basic problems of making these things louder, aren't they? Because exactly. they sound fantastic until you try and make them louder, and then you just head into all kinds of problems. So, I guess. We will touch on some of that, but really what we're talking about is effects. Yeah, and, you know, just the, the whole idea of using acoustic guitars loud, how to get some noises from effects, what, what I What I like about this already is that your acoustic pedal board is bigger than most people's <laughs> normal <laughs> electric pedal board. Yeah, I know. It, yeah. It's sad. I suppose that's what happens when you have a... Yeah, anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, this is my, my purely acoustic board, okay? Um... And, you know, there's a number of things on here. So I have a couple of overdrive pedals on here. Mm, I noticed. People. Yes. Um, so anyway, let's have a look. Um, a couple of things, first of all, that you struggle with. So let's take your absolutely gorgeous, amazing Collings guitar. <whistles> it's, I mean, that's a very special instrument. Yes, it is. Okay. So... What I'll do, actually, let me give you this. Now, the pickup system that you have in there is a H&K Pure Western Mini. Nearly. Nearly? It's a K&K Pure Mini. Pure Mini, not Pure Western. Mm, no, it's a Pure Mini. It does okay. have a passive volume control, which means you do lose a bit of high end when you turn it down. Ah. But when you have it full up, which can actually be really useful. Of course. But um, So, yeah, it's a K&K Pure Mini, which is purely passive. Mm -hmm. So... Dramatic drop off in volume and tone, bit like the same as a strap. Okay. So yep. uh, that can be quite useful uh, in a live situation. Anyway, purely passive, no active electronics in this guitar okay. at all. So, with such an extraordinary instrument, if you get the chance to play a Collins acoustic, just to stand in front of one while it's being played is amazing. <laughs> but it suffers from the same physical attributes as any acoustic guitar, especially in a loud environment when you yeah, plug it in. The more. Um, actively acoustic a guitar is, i.e. the more it resonates, the more problems you've got when you when you plug in at volume, which exactly. is why a guitar like this might not be absolutely ideal in a loud situation, but in any case, uh, yeah, so there it is. There it is. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, so what we'll do, so that's a passive pickup, mm -hmm. okay? Um, now, listen to this one. This is a... Um, this is a Tanglewood, one of the master designed Neat. ones with, with lots of ball ends and, and picks in there. Um, this is a, now, acoustically, I mean, it sounds like a box compared to yours. You know, it's, it's, it's probably worth as much as the box that yours <laughs> came in. Um, but electrically, Yeah, 
yeah. okay. It, it, instantly, I can hear that that's an under the saddle pickup. There you go. It is, yeah, yeah. Yep. So it has that. I now I've never known how to pronounce this. Piso, piezo, piezo. If, if you're American, it's piezo. Hey, piezo. If uh, if you're England English, it's piezo. Piezo. It is piezo. Yeah. If you're I don't know anything else, it might be piezo or some terrible mispronunciation. Okay. I don't know. Piezo. Let's kind of, let's say piezo. Okay. So with this piezo pickup, it has that inherent piezo quackiness. <laughs> You yeah, know, like two, two to three K. Yeah, yeah that, we love rah, that. Just ah, and one of the things that they that sort of sound does. Um, so when we're talking about how the the, the top of these guitars resonate, yeah, yep, and that sort of sound, it hits this guitar and it creates that feedback loop. So I mean, we're playing a very low volumes here, but you plug that into a PA system, and you know, at low volumes, it's fine. You get away with it, like we're, we yeah. are here. But as soon as you get to any, you're playing with a drummer, you get problems. Yeah, you've literally only got to walk on stage, haven't you? And it's like yep. howling, crazy resonant feedback. Which yeah. is why you have phase. So if you see on a lot of the active electronics, will have a phase switch. Mm. And what that phase switch does is it changes the phase of the signal going out of the guitar. And so what will happen is it reverses the phase as the signal, the amplifier signal hits the guitar, it's a different phase, so it won't resonate. It sort I of have never each other. heard it explained like that before. That makes perfect sense. I've always gone, yeah, yeah, yeah. One, one, one setting always sounds immediately right and gives you the least problems. Right. But that's obviously why it is. Of I'd never worked that out. Right. So if you imagine this, the top of your acoustic guitar is like a speaker. Yeah. It works just like a speaker, and the speaker that's in there, if they're, you know, if they're working, and there's this. You know, you've got loud volume and it's mm. got that feedback loop, and then you change the phase on one side. Problem so that's gone. what that is. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah? But again, it still has inherent problems. Mm. Okay. I, uh, a couple of weeks ago, Jamie from Guitarist Magazine stopped by and he said, Who? <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> Jamie, that handsome fellow. Um, <laughs> So Jamie from Guitarist Magazine stopped by and he bought a guitar with him and that I thought, hmm, interesting. And I played it and I haven't put it down since. To be fair, I've demoed the same guitar for Guitarist Magazine this month. Have you? In fact, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, and yeah, okay. I know what's right, going to happen so next. Here we go. I'm going to pass this to my trusty assistant. Check this out. I know, I know, I know, right? How it's the oddest looking thing, but. So. Yes, this guitar's been with me for a week, and it's amazing. Well, I've, there's, there's no air in it. There's no air in it. It has no box, therefore you've immediately solved a load of the resonance problems that you have with a traditional acoustic guitar. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. completely. So I played a uh, gig with this last weekend with a loud drummer and going through my pedal board, and it was just perfect. <laughs> it, was, it was perfect. So, for example, one of the things that I, I use a lot is overdrive pedals with acoustic sound. Um, and, you know, so one of the things about the, uh, the, the AC Plus from Exotic Effects with this active three band EQ. Yep. For certain things, if you're, so we did this as, as a duo, it's just acoustic guitar and drums, right? <laughs> the and it's, it's the shite stripes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, called, it's called the bipolar bears. And, <laughs> and <laughs> jokes about mental health notwithstanding, that's actually quite funny. <laughs> Thank you. 
Um, uh, you know what? It, the amount of people <laughs> we've had people got to kids go, really? I'm bipolar. Oh, thanks for that. Um, so anyway, so but it's loud. Uh, this is the yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. and yeah, yeah. and you know to to have a gamut of of sounds. Um, one of the things is throwing on an overdrive pedal. Yep. And it's, it sounds fantastic, but I've always struggled. Yeah. With uh, with a you know standard hollow body because as soon as you turn that overdrive pedal on, and obviously the mid range gets pushed that bit more, and it's compressed, so it yeah. just kicks off, and it's so hard to control that. Interesting that you use the overdrive because. When you hear it in, in isolation, you think, oh, that's a bit rough around the edge. It's not exactly what I was expecting, not mm. a very beautiful sound. Mm. But in a band context, oh, underneath yeah. the singing and the drums, absolutely. In fact, there are a few acoustic guitar players who will run something like a deluxe reverb mm -hmm. or a, um, an AC30 or something yep. f and have that in addition to their acoustic guitar sound. Yep. They'll Black split Francis, the signal. Yeah, okay. You know, and the Pixies. Yep. He's got this Martin, he just runs it into his AC30s, he's yep. cranked. Sounds amazing. Yeah, Jason Mraz does it as well. There you go. You know, uh, pick up to the PA and then split into it. Anyway. Yeah. So. Don't be afraid to overdrive your acoustic. Don't be afraid to overdrive your acoustic because, it, it, you know, it can, it can be fantastic. Mm. One of the things um, that works very well on acoustic boards, on all boards really, but on acoustic boards especially, is an EQ pedal. Mm. Okay? The reason being is... It allows you, so sometimes, depending on what you're plugged into, we were talking about before about the mid control, mm. and being able to control the frequencies of your own mid range before it hits the desk is really handy. Yeah. Okay? And sometimes just making the bottom end a bit rounder. So if this is, like with the uh, EQs made it a bit smileier. So you just hear that, you know, lift the bottom end up a bit more, mm. takes a little bit of the mid range out. Uh, phases can be great as well. Um, so. Just a different flavor from the. Yeah. You know, they're great. And also, if you're fantastic for a solo. I think it's probably worth mentioning that in the kind of environment that you're talking about, we're in the same environment. We're probably banging out relatively large numbers of the same chords, playing songs that people know in an entertaining kind of way. Yep. We're not we're not recording our next album. We're not doing anything no. particularly artistic. We are paying the rent, baby. Simply, exactly. So we're talking about practicality. Yep. And if every song, you know, chances are during your acoustic driven set, there's going to be a lot of open G, D, A minor, C, a couple of capoed versions thereof. I mean, that's how it works, of isn't course. it? It is for me anyway. Yeah. So to be able to step on a something just to get a bit of variety in there, yeah. just opens it out massively. Of course. For yourself as much as anything. Yeah, yeah. You know, just to keep it interesting. Yeah. Because I wake you up can... like this sometimes. <laughs> uh, you know, sorry. Uh, but... <laughs> but you know, if you're if you're doing this a lot, giving yourself, you know, something yeah, to be even more expressive. Mm. There's no reason that you can't be expressive and have fun in an acoustic key, and explore different sounds. Yeah, you know, it's a great opportunity. I think for a lot of a lot of guys out there, they're doing more acoustic gigs than electric gigs these days. There you go. Exhibit A. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Actually, exhibit B. Yeah. You know, we can still be creative and still explore sounds with an acoustic guitar. Mm. I'm just, you know, since this has come along, the one thing about this has got this headphone output. Have you played with the headphone output? Mm. It's amazing, absolutely amazing. Um, so, you know, I haven't, I've been practicing like the last two weeks. <laughs> I, just, I just haven't wanted to put the guitar down. So anyway, that's, that's the phaser. Um, tremolo is also just a light tremolo. Oh yeah, quite quick. When that's a, that's a, 
traditional. Beautiful. Yeah. Trouble plays on it. Oh, uh, actually, um, when we're talking about overdrive pedals before as well, so, you know, for a little bit of light. But you can you can go quite heavy with your overdrive sound. Now, that is a sound I couldn't do before with my traditional Yep. It's yeah. But with this thing. And so we can get quite it just sounds, heavy with it. Sounds it sounds just as kind of lo-fi and and nasty and yeah, 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 as Jack. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Cool. Um, so, yes, you can use overdrive to great effect. You know, looping. I tell you what, a good mate of mine, Matt Stevens, mm. is going to come down, uh, and we're going to do a looping special with Matt Stevens. Whoa! Have you seen Matt play? I have. Unbelievable. So he's going to give us the lowdown because you know I can do basic stuff, but I'm pretty rubbish. You know, it's a loop, you know. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But what Matt does with it is extraordinary. What have we learned today? We've learned that you could and should use effects with your acoustic guitars. Absolutely. There are different ways to... Actually, there is one thing I want to try. So just get your overdrive sound up a minute. Which one? Uh, either um, of them. Either of them? Just the one that's loud. Right. <coughs> that, there's one that's louder than that. Yeah, but that's the one that sounds good. Or well, you want a loud one? Yeah, because we're talking about... Ah, I'll just quickly put this... So why this um, pedal sounds particularly interesting with the acoustic guitar is it has a direct signal through it. So you can hear, they're still... Oh, I see. You so see that? Mix it, mixing. So it mixes like the overdrive on top. Yep. So you've got no problems with any sort of feedback at all. None at all. And that's pretty loud. Go and play again. So I rather suspect that this will be a different story. I don't know. Let's see. Ready? Yep. Yeah. No, not really. Not really. Also, it's a very different because that's passive. It's very so it still works. <laughs> everyone, but everyone at Collins is having a heart attack at this point. <laughs> Can I try some tremolo? Of course. Yeah, without the. And then if you add some. This will have reverb in the album somewhere here. That's good. You like it? Yeah, I good. Like it. Good. I have to say, these things sound good, don't they? I'm, I'm, I am buying one as soon as we turn the cameras off. Um, it's an AER Compact 60. There are many different AERs, but um, yeah, I mean, when you think this is a passive, a passive only pickup, there's no EQ, no electronics in this guitar whatsoever. <laughs> Now. 
clearly it's not the most beautiful acoustic sound you've ever heard because it's going straight into an amp and being DI'd, but no, no jiggery pokery. That's not that's pretty good. It's fantastic. Not too bad. Yeah. Anyway, we digress. We digress. Um, yes, but I would say the moral of the story is that you can still be creative and explore sounds. It's very worthwhile doing. Yeah. Even overdrive. Even overdrive. There we go. Hope that was helpful. And uh, have a fantastic week, everyone. We'll see you next Friday. See you again.